Sarah Pegg. Here is Oscar Pegg, the right-handed batter, coming up to the plate. One out on the board, and St. Joe leading three to nothing here in the top of the third. After Paul gets the pop-up to the short, make that the second baseman. Low and away, 1-0. One and one count, one away. With a three nothing lead. Two and one. Peg walked back in the first and was stranded on first for St. Joseph. Barrett just misses inside. And now a 3-1 count here with one away as the sun peeks back out from behind the clouds. Called. Three and two. Payoff. Swing. This is another pop-up, this time towards shallow center field. And again, it's Colin Evers, the shortstop, and the catch. So Alex Barrett comes in to pitch and draws up a couple of pop-outs, and now here's the left fielder, Dakota Spicer, once again. A swing out, swinging strikeout back in the first. Right-handed batter coming up to the plate. Top of the third continues. St. Joseph leading three to nothing. Barrett winds up, delivers. Flips the outside. 0 and 1. So, right handed pitcher up on the mound from Nyack. Outside, 1 and 1. Barreth, number four in his jersey. He's from Farmington, Minnesota, stands at 6'2". Normally plays in the infield, but has pitched this year as well. Two and one. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, two and two. Well, Dryberg is due up if Spicer can advance. Barrett winds up and delivers on the two two. Missed it three and two. So far, three runs, two hits for St. Joseph. Nothing else on the board for either team. Barrett fires. Swing, bouncing ball, foul. Back toward Des Moines' warm-up circle. This turf infield is impressive. Was installed prior to this spring season for Simpson College. Payoff pitch coming up here from Barrett. Another foul ball, this time three and two. Again, St. Joseph, a lot of foul balls today. Trying to raise these pitch counts as much as possible. Payoff coming up with two outs and the base is empty. Swing and a miss in the first strikeout pitch by Alex Barrett today. And the fourth by the Peak Prospects pitchers. Prospects down 3 nothing though. Let's see if they can get their offense going when we come back. I spend a lot of time in the garage, but even more time in the rain and mud. In 95, I helped tow your moving trailer. In 09, it was sparks from me, your chains, dragging behind your truck that accidentally started a wildfire. Spark a change, not a wildfire. 
Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. <laughs> Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Three nothing, St. Joseph leads and do up for the peak prospects. It's eight nine and one. Jelnor, Ziegler, and Thomas. As we welcome you back to live coverage of the Des Moines Peak Prospects. Jelnor, who had the game-winning RBI towards right of center field last night in the bottom of the thirteenth, will look at a pitch down in the zone called zero and one. The pitcher is still Aaron Harrington. No hits, no runs so far. Jelnor, fly ball, right of center field. And the diving catch is made by Lukart. One away. That outfield has been active so far for St. Joseph over the last couple of plate appearances. And due up here for Des Moines is going to be Jalen Ziegler. His fourth game with the Peak Prospects just joined the team a few days ago. He was the leadoff batter in his first ever Mink League game back on Saturday in St. Joseph. Just a swing. Did he go? One oh, he did not. Here's a swing, a high fly ball towards left field. And caught in foul territory by D Dakota Spicer. Two outs. So here is Carter Thomas. Walk and a caught stealing back in the first. Prospects down three to nothing at the moment. Thomas swings, lines one, right to the third baseman. Great catch there on the play by Mason Holton. Three up, three down against the peak prospects. And that will do it for the third inning. St. Joseph leads three to nothing. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on the whole time. <laughs> Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school. But I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. What grows in the forest? Trees? Sure. Know what else grows in the forest? Our imagination our sense of wonder, and our family bonds grow too. Because when we disconnect from this and connect with this, we reconnect with each other. The forest is closer than you think. Find a forest near you and start exploring at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Making plans, you are the best. What about those round trips, which are perfect on your way there and perfect on your way back? Or those meetings with friends, surprise parties, camps, birthdays. The same way you plan for the important moments, start planning to protect you and your loved ones from a natural disaster. Sign up for local weather and emergency alert. Prepare an emergency kit and make a family communications plan. 
Get started at ready.gov slash plan. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Will Dryberg to the plate here for St. Joseph. He just found the first pitch on a tip. 0-1 is the count. Peak prospects down 3-0 playing defense. Here's a swing and another tip. 0-2 and, and Barrett has been hard to get. To get swings off of pitches off so far, we've seen a couple of pop-ups to the second baseman in very shallow center just across the infield, and then a swing and a miss back in the previous inning, one and two. This is Barrett's potential second inning of play. Has thrown one full inning in relief. The starter, Carter Thomas, so far. Ball one, it's one and two. Low and away, two and two. Swing and a miss. It was dropped by Jelnor, and he'll throw to first. Another peak prospect strikeout. One out, top of the fourth continues. Barrett on the mound, base is empty. St. Joseph brings up the shortstop, Cole Slabowski. Slabowski at the top of the order is so far 0 for 1 with a walk, a run, and they had a liner to the right field back in the second. All breaks away from the zone, 1 0. Two and oh. Again, not much wind at the moment. Pretty pleasant and humid evening in South Central Iowa. Three oh. That one was outside. Called near the corner, 3 1. 3 1, one out, base is empty. St. Joseph up 3 0 here in the top of the fourth. Barrett winds up and delivers, gets it down in the zone, 3 and 2. What a pitch. Started looking like it was going to go inside and then veer towards the center of the plate. Payoff from Barrett. The windup, the pitch, swing, bounced foul. Count stays at three and two. Payoff pitch, swing, ground ball through the middle, and he goes to first off of St. Joe's third base hit of the day. So the prospects pitching right now, and the Mustangs lead 3-0, top of the fourth. They have not scored since the second inning. Now that is for St. Joe, number two, Braden Lucard. Braden Lucard over for one today with a walk and a run in the second. And St. Joseph up 3-0 here in the top of the fourth. Barrett looks at first briefly and throws the pitch, and he hits Lukart. Lukart to first, Slabowski to second. Runners on first and second. Now that is number 24, Ryan Callahan. Here's Ryan Callahan, one for one today, single and a hit by pitch, also has a run. One of my favorite people. What is that? 
One out, runners on first and second here for the Mustangs. Barrett gets a call, 0 and 1. Count is one and one. Ryan Callahan at the plate. He's got Lucard on first and Slabowski on second. Swing. One hop liner, second baseman Evers turns to Anderson. The shortstop won't try the double play. Wouldn't have had time, but Lucard is retired. Slabowski advances to second. That's out number two, and Callahan is first off of the fielder's choice. Easton Bruce, one for one today with a walk and a single, an RBI single. That was back in the second. St. Joseph leading 3 0. Runners at the corners here, top of the fourth. And two outs on the board. Two strikeouts pitched today by Alex Barrett. No swing called 0 and 1. Swing. This one's crushed to right field. Short looking at it, but he's got plenty of time, and he makes the catch. Strands runners at the corners. 3-0 St. Joseph. The bottom of the fourth is next. Let's be honest. The National Symphony may not be in his future, but he wanted to try violin. So you said yes because you love him. And if you love him that much, love him enough to make sure he's buckled up and in the back seat. Find out more about keeping your kids safe in your vehicle at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Neil Armstrong waited six hours and 39 minutes to step onto the surface of the moon. Jackie Robinson waited 20 months to play his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And even DiCaprio had to wait 22 years to win an Oscar. You can wait until your destination. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. Bottom of the fourth heading your way. Peak prospects down 3 nothing. Good defense in the fourth with runners at the corners. We're able to get the third out, and that'll bring up to the plate for the peak prospects. Tanner Short, Noah Cook, and Declan O'Hare, the 2-3-4 and four do up here for Des Moines. Off for Des Moines. Bottom of the fourth, number 15, Tanner Short. Tanner Short, number 15 on his jersey, had 44 ribbies and 12 home runs his freshman season at Ellsworth Community College. Swings and misses on the first pitch, and the count is 0-1 to start the at-bat. Harrington misses the zone, 1-1. One one. Three innings so far for Aaron Harrington. He has thrown one strikeout and still given up no hits yet to the peak prospects. Here's a swing by Short. Gets it on a grounder to the third baseman. Holton throws across the diamond. Callahan makes the catch. One out, base is empty. Prospects down 3 nothing. We continue the bottom of the fourth here on YouTube and Mixler. And up to the plate is Noah Cook, the first baseman. one -zero is the count. Swing. This one is sent towards center field and caught by Braden Lucart. So a liner out by Cook, and it feels like every area of the field is covered right now by this St. Joseph defense. 
Two outs on the board. That brings up Declan O'Hare. 0 for 1 with a swinging strikeout back in the first. Peak prospects down 3 to nothing right now here in the bottom of the fourth. Again, bottom of the fourth. Des Moines, which had broken a seven-game losing streak last night, trying to get what would be a massive win over St. Joseph, the three-in-a-row winners of the Mink League title. Harrington fires the pitch outside 2-0. O'Hare, native of Los Angeles, California, has played four seasons so far with an extra year of eligibility at Central College Division III School in the American Rivers Conference. 3-0 is the count. The ARC well represented by this team. The head coach is Tyler Willis. He's an assistant at Simpson. Ball four and O'Hare will advance on the walk. His assistant, Joel Sampson, is a catcher at Simpson. So that's the American Rivers Conference, the Simpson side. We mentioned Declan O'Hare. Here's Colin Evers at the plate. We also have a pitcher on this roster from Coe College, Mike Bonner, who's running music and sound effects and also live statting on Game Changer. Goes to Coe College, and nobody knows what a Cohawk is. First pitch outside, 1-0. Co College is out in Cedar Rapids, a couple hours east of here. It's about 30 minutes north of Iowa City. 1-0 swing, popped up into the sky. And that is the shortstop. Just past the infield, Cole Slabowski, who makes the catch. Four up, three down. Des Moines has yet to garner a hit today. And we go to the top of the fifth. Your score, St. Joseph 3, Des Moines 0. We are back, and we are looking at a pretty lopsided matchup, Jim. That's right, Ron. I mean, in one corner, we've got a 175-pound guy, and in the other, a 6,000-ton heavyweight train? Jim, this guy has no idea what he's getting himself into. It's no contest. Every day, people tempt fate and die trespassing on railroad tracks. See tracks, think train. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school, but I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Top of the fifth, heading your way. And St. Joseph will bat with a three-run lead, 3-0. Three they have pitched a no-hitter so far. Des Moines on its second pitcher, Alex Barreth, who has thrown two innings so far with a pair of strikeouts on the day. Big prospects have not given up a run since the second. But their bats have been shut down so far by an impressive Mustang defense. Now batting for the Mustangs, number 18, Mason Holton. Here's Mason Holton coming up to the plate. Holton with a walk. It was a walk that scored a run with the bases loaded. Looking strikeout back in the second. He is hit by the pitch. Third time today that Des Moines has hit a batter. And Holton with the free trip to first. Michael Paul about to come up to the plate. I told her it wasn't that what? Absolutely beautiful evening. Now here. batting for the Mustangs, number four, Michael Paul. Town of about 15,000 people. And you can be in Des Moines city limits in about 12 minutes. If anybody from Iowa ever complains about traffic, it is not a thing here. 1 0 is the count. <laughs> I say that as a native of the Nashville, Tennessee area. Coming up here, it's so easy driving everywhere, except for the fact that everybody drives slowly outside 2-0 in Des Moines. You go on the interstates back home, they're all going 80. You go on them here, they're all going 60, 65. And inevitably, somebody's in the left lane going 60 miles an hour. 2-0. Out. Nope, it was called. 2-1. and one. High in the zone across the right side of the plate. 2-1 and one with a runner on first. No outs here on Michael Paul. Paul is 0-1 for 1 today with a sack fly RBI in the first. 
Fire the fires swung on and high fly ball, but out of the park foul ball. A couple of bystanders walking their dogs, able to avoid getting hit by that one. Two and two. This park plays big. Don't see it leave the yard too often. If it does, it's a foul ball. Fastball low and outside and running to second is Mason Holton on the wild pitch. Full count here on Paul. We continue the top of the fifth. St. Joseph up 3 nothing. Barrett looks at second, now throws the pitch. Fastball outside, ball four. Paul to first. So St. Joe up 3-0. No outs top of the fifth with runners on first and second for the Mustangs. Fans, be sure to join us tomorrow, 7 p.m. Chillicothe is in town before Des Moines has a one-day break on Thursday. You can get tickets at the gate. Eight bucks, cash only, full concession stand, $3 beers, $5 high noons, $2 hot dogs on the campus of Simpson College. Low and away, runners will advance to second and third off the wild pitch. We may see a run score, no. Holton decided to stay at third after turning initially. So it's Paul to second and Holton to third, another wild pitch that will advance this time two runners. And the count here is 1-0 against Oscar Pegg. So far, three runs, three hits by St. Joe. No runs, no hits by Des Moines. We have not seen any errors yet. Top of the fifth continues. No outs on the board. Two runners and scoring position. Low, 2-0. Barrett winds up and delivers. Swing and a miss. Two and one. It was a slider. Runners on second and third. Here's the two one pitch. Bouncing ball. O'Hare, the third baseman, will opt to turn the throw to first. Gets cut for the out. But. Holton will run home and score. And it is 4-0 St. Joseph. Paul remains on second. He is the lone runner. At bat number nine, Dakota Spicer. So one out. Mustangs up 4-0 here in the top of the fifth. And Dakota Spicer to the plate. The left fielder 0 for 2 with a pair of swinging strikeouts. His pitching staffer, Des Moines, has collected a handful of strikeouts so far. Carter Thomas was the starter. I'm not Barrett looks back at second. Runner goes outside. Ball one. And Jelner will up not to throw. So Paul will advance on the play. To third. Spicer. 1 0 count. Outside, 2 0. Paul on third. Lone base runner right now. 2 0. Here's the pitch. Swing. One hop. Anderson thinking. Runner from third won't go, so he'll throw to first and collect the ground out on a 6 3. Good job by Anderson to survey the scene and still buy enough time to throw to first. Two outs, runner still on third. That's Paul. Paul stole third moments ago. Jelner opted not to throw. Dryberg. 0 for 2 today with a pair of strikeouts. Low. Ball bounces away from Jelnor, but not far. 1-0. Low and away, 2-0. 
Four nothing. St. Joseph leads. They've added a run on an RBI ground out by Oscar Pegg that scored Mason Holton moments ago. Two oh two outs. Spareth on the mound. Kicks and fires. Swing. Looper in the right of center field, and Paul will score. Five nothing. Mustangs. Top of the fifth continues. It is all St. Joseph. Fourth base hit, fifth run today by St. Joe. And now Coach Willis heading up to the mound. Wonder if this will be a change or maybe just a mound visit. That was Dryberg with the RBI single. And that'll do it for Alex Barrith. Pitching change, new arm coming to the mound. We will update you on that when we come back on the Peak Prospects Network. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Let's be honest, the National Symphony may not be in his future, but he wanted to try violin. So you said yes because you love him. And if you love him that much, love him enough to make sure he's buckled up and in the back seat. Find out more about keeping your kids safe in your vehicle at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Urbandale High School's Parker Stewart will join his teammate from high school, Jalen Ziegler, on defense as he will be the third pitcher used today by the Peak Prospects following the RBI single by Will Dryberg. The St. Joseph Mustangs lead 5-0 here in the top of the fifth. So Barrett's day is done after two and two-thirds innings. Carter Thomas went two innings. Two runs here in the top of the fifth. First time that... St. Joe had scored since the second. And we're about to go to the top of the order as well with Cole Slabowski. Stewart spent his freshman season at Northeast Community College in Nebraska. Five ten freshman right-handed pitcher, 180 pounds, again from Urbandale, Iowa, a western suburb of the Des Moines area. So here we go. Two outs on the board. Runner on first is Dryberg. St. Joseph is batting. Dryberg goes. The throw is not in time. He's got a stolen base for St. Joe. Both teams pretty aggressive with stolen bases so far. Slabowski is the shortstop. Had a walk in the first, liner in the second. There was a line out to the right fielder and a single in the fourth, and he was stranded on third in that inning. 0-1, one, one and one, two away. Again, Parker Stewart on the mound. Needs to throw a third of an inning here to retire the side. And give Des Moines a chance for its first base hit of the day. Peak prospects. Suffering from a no-hitter right now by Alex Harrington. Swing, ground ball to the second baseman, Evers. And he finds Cook at first, and the side is retired. St. Joseph, two runs, bringing up a pitching change, and Stewart gets the ground ball to end the side. 5 nothing. St. Joseph, big prospects looking for their first hit when we come back. Let's be honest, the National Symphony may not be in his future, but he wanted to try violin. So you said yes because you love him. And if you love him that much, love him enough to make sure he's buckled up and in the back seat. Find out more about keeping your kids safe in your vehicle at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. 
keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on SmokeyBear.com with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Jackson Brooks is leading off for Des Moines. Pete Prospects down 5 nothing. bottom of the fifth, heading your way. Brooks from Burlington, Iowa. Went to high school at Minneapolis, 15 minutes away. Went to Mesa Community College this spring out in the Phoenix area. Count starts out 1-0 here. Harrington remains on the mound. He's thrown no hits so far here for St. Joe. 1-1. One and one. 46 pitches so far. Very efficient. Prospects have advanced a total of three base runners today, one of whom was caught stealing back in the first. Blooper, Michael Paul makes the catch. And again, big prospects just cannot find a seam today as Brooks is retired on the line out to the second baseman. So that'll bring up the shortstop, Blake Anderson. 0 for 1 today with a fly out to the right fielder back in the second. Anderson, 35 on his jersey, left handed batter from Johnson County Community College. That's in Kansas. Starts the count out 0 1. 5 11 freshman, native of Urbandale. Softly hit ground ball rolling down the third base line, but it goes foul, and the count is quickly 0-2 here against Anderson. This is a nine-inning game, not a doubleheader today. Prospects haven't had a doubleheader in a minute. Their next one will be on Friday in Clorinda. We'll have that game on Mixler. Clorinda will have its own video stream. Swing, ricochet, foul, 0-2. That was caught by somebody in the dugout. I don't know who. It was Lucas Gelmore. A barehanded catch in the dugout. Oh and 2 one away. Just outside, 1-2. And... Jilnor, who is warming up right now, is due up. One hot blooper to the first baseman, and the underhand throw completed. That's actually the pitcher who catches the ground ball and goes to Callahan at first. One, three, ground out. Two up, two down so far, and that will bring up Jelnor, the catcher. 0 for 1 with a fly out to the center fielder today. Bottom of the fifth continues. Peak prospects down four to nothing. Number 11, Lucas Jelnor. Jelnor is wearing number 11 on his jersey. Starts out with a 1-0 count. Joined this team around June 13th from Stockholm, Sweden. 1-0. Foul ball back, 1-1. One Jelner spent one year at Urbandale High School. That was back in 2022, 21 to 22 technically, but he played that spring season and went back, played his final season of baseball at the high school level in Stockholm. Foul ball up and away, one and two, two outs here in the bottom of the fifth. He'll be playing junior college out here in Iowa this spring. One and two. Outside. Two and two. So far, St. Joseph, five runs, four hits. Des Moines, no runs, no hits. Here in the bottom of the fifth. Here's the 2-2 pitch. Swing, ground ball that bounces off of the pitcher. Harrington, the throw to first is in time. What a play. I think that may have been, was that the second baseman or the shortstop? The second baseman, Michael Pohl. 
who made the last second throw to Callahan at first. Three up, three down. A pair of ground outs preceded by a line out. And still no hits today for the big prospects and only three base runners advancing. Top of the sixth is next. Des Moines down 5 nothing. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe. And it's the best way to protect that legacy. Protect your legacy. Visit ready.gov forward slash plan for the tools and tips you need to start your emergency preparedness plan today. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen. For late nights writing English papers. For your teen's music taste. For dinners, where they talk more on their phone than with you. For the first time, they call you mom. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen, and you can't imagine the reward. To learn more about adopting a teen, visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. 5 nothing, all Mustangs, and they're up to bat. St. Joseph here on the road in Des Moines today. First time that they have made the trip here to Simpson College, 25 minutes south of downtown Des Moines, one county south here in Warren County. Two, three, and four do up. Lukart, Callahan, and Bruce. Parker Stewart back to the mound. One third of an inning so far. Starts out 1 0 on the count. One oh. Stewart fires. Inside. Two and oh. Left-handed batter up here at the plate with a 2-0 count. Here's the pitch. Swing, fly ball, up and away. Foul towards the water tower. There is a tennis court, a series of tennis courts parallel to the third baseline. Parking lot parallel to the first baseline. Simpson softball field is out beyond left of center field. Swing, high fly ball left of center field, but not deep. Brooks underneath it makes the catch. That's the left fielder, Jackson Brooks. A shout out to his Jackson dad, Brooks with the catch. We'll Ben Brooks from Burlington, who's made the trip to a couple of road games. Had the chance to meet him a couple of times. Always enjoyed chatting with him. I believe he is watching the broadcast today. One out, base is empty. St. Joe leads five to nothing. Ryan Callahan, the first baseman, at the plate. And he sends a blooper through the middle. Fifth hit of the day by St. Joe. Again, Des Moines has had no hits yet so far. Easton Bruce to the plate. Walk in the first, RBI single in the second. Fly out to the right fielder in the fourth. Callahan on first, number 21, Easton Bruce, the designated hitter. Swings on the first pitch and chops it foul wide of the first base line, and the count starts at 0-1. Bruce, number four batter. Oh one Breaking ball missed the zone. One and one. They try the pickoff to first, not in time. Callahan is safe there for the Mustangs. Mustangs play their home games at historic Phil Welch Stadium, established 1939. That is a fantastic ballpark, one of my favorite 
in the league to go to. Popped up into the air. And this is the third baseman, O'Hare, between third and home, making the catch. O'Hare with the catch will bring up number 18, Mason. That is two outs, leaving a runner on first here for St. Joseph. Mustangs with a 5 nothing advantage here in the top of the sixth. Mason Holton, the third baseman. Walk in the first, looking strikeout in the second, hit by a pitch and scored in the fifth. Up to the plate, number 18 on his jersey, right-handed batter against the right-handed pitcher, Parker Stewart, who has now thrown a full inning. One hit so far against Stewart. Slider misses 1-0. One zero, Stewart tries the pickoff. Count starts at one zero. Here's the one zero call down in the zone. Runner goes, but the throw is a little bit wide of the plate. Tag not in time there. No, we got him. Catch made there by Colin Evers, the second baseman, and Callahan is tagged after reaching the plate. And called out on the plate to Strand Holton. At the plate, we will take a break. Big prospects down 5 nothing. Bottom of the sixth is next. What grows in the forest? Trees? Sure. Know what else grows in the forest? Our imagination, our sense of wonder, and our family bonds grow too. Because when we disconnect from this and connect with this, we reconnect with each other. The forest is closer than you think. Find a forest near you and start exploring at discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says... Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on... SmokeyBear.com with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Bottom of the six coming up, prospects bringing up their 9-1-2, and two, Ziegler, Thomas, and Short. First pitch, ball one, 1-0. One oh. Harrington on the mound still has thrown no hits so far through five innings. Just one strikeout during that, or two strikeouts during that span. Two and zero. Oh. Here's a swing, fly ball, left of center, caught. Dakota Spicer makes the catch. Just didn't have enough distance. One away, base is empty. Prospects down 5 nothing here in the bottom of the sixth. And that'll bring up Carter Thomas, who is now the designated hitter. He was the starting pitcher. 59 pitches by Aaron Harrington. Make that 60 pitches by Harrington. And still no hits. Up to this point, home plate umpire to talk to Harrington for a moment. One out. Thomas from Wayne State College. That's a Division II program in Wayne, Nebraska, the Northern Sun Intercollegiate Conference, Division II. Thomas, bouncing ball down the first baseline foul. Some of the programs you may know of in that conference include Upper Iowa, the only Division II team in the state of Iowa. Sioux Falls and Augustana. A one inside. Did it hit him? Yes, it did. And Thomas will reach for the second time today. He's got an on-base percentage of essentially two out of three. And short up to the plate with one out. Prospects down 5 nothing, And that is just the fourth time that a base runner has advanced today for Des Moines Peak Prospects. Still Thomas have no hits. Thomas the first base. We'll bring up number 15, Tanner Schultz. 
Tanner Short today is 0 for 1 with a walk and a ground out in the first and the fourth. Prospects have been outscored 5 to nothing. They've been out hit 5 to nothing. There have been no errors on either side. Noah Cook, the first baseman, warming up on deck. Swing and a miss. 0 and 1. Again, just two strikeouts pitched by Harrington so far, but this defense has been phenomenal for St. Joe. Upstairs, one and one. We've seen a great catch in center field from Braden Lucart. Michael Paul making a catch on a blooper. Mason Holton, fantastic catch on a low liner to third. One, one. Swing. This one's crushed towards left field. Spicer looking back at the wall. Goodbye. Tanner Short, his first big big home run. And that will score Carter Thomas and the Peak Prospects down five to two. One out on the board. For somebody who had a dozen home runs at Ellsworth, he's been looking for that all season, and he got one there, and that's the first home game home run for Des Moines as well. And up to the plate is Noah Cook now with the bases empty and one out on the board. First pitch, 1-0. Up and away, 2-0. Swings and fouls it. That would have been a strike without a swing. Two and one. Cook, a veteran of the Peak Prospects, his fifth season with the program. This team has been around since 2018. He was part of the squad that played... Hang on one second. Curveball got him two and two. Part of the squad that played in 2020 at Principal Park, the home of the Iowa Cubs. They played inner squad matches. This one is a liner through the middle. And Noah Cook to first. Second base hit. So Tanner Short's home run was the first hit for Des Moines. And now Noah Cook immediately following gets the single into center field. Declan O'Hare coming up to the plate for Des Moines with a runner on first. One out, big prospects down five to two. O'Hare today 0 for 1 with a strikeout and a walk in the first and the fourth. Cook is on first, Tanner Short, two-run home run to score himself and Carter Thomas and put Des Moines down five to two. Off speed, got him 0-2. No swing. Oh and two is the count. The pitch to O'Hare. Swings and lines it back on a foul to the backstop. Mike Bonner, one of our pitchers and sound effects technicians, is running the broken windshields. Oh and two. One and two. Nope. Just kidding. Called strike. And the count with Owen oh two was called for strike three. Declan O'Hare is retired. Prospects down five to two. Two outs on the board. Noah Cook remains on first. Here is Colin Evers. Breaking ball got him 0-1. Swing by Evers. Fly ball left field. Not very deep. Spicer runs up to make the catch. Three outs, Tanner Short, his first Mink League home run. He was a home run specialist at Ellsworth, and he cuts into the St. Joseph lead with Des Moines' first hit of the day, and Des Moines is down 5-2, to two, going into the top of the seventh. Hi, 
I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Let's be honest. The National Symphony may not be in his future, but he wanted to try violin. So you said yes because you love him. And if you love him that much, love him enough to make sure he's buckled up and in the back seat. Find out more about keeping your kids safe in your vehicle at nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Tanner Short with his first home run of the season puts Des Moines down 5-2. to two. And for St. Joseph, they will be bringing up to the plate their 5, 6, and 7. Starting here with Mason Holton, who was stranded on the plate when Callahan was caught stealing. Parker Stewart back on the mound. Fires just outside, 1-0. Swing, fouled up and away, one and one. <laughs> Holton is the third baseman. He was hit by a pitch and scored back in the fifth. Swings, pops up. This may go foul. Let's see. No, it is Lucas Jellor, the catcher, making it right by the St. Joseph duckout for the out. So that is a foul out here in the top of the seventh. St. Joe leads 5-2, to two, no runners on. Great catch there by Jelnor. Michael Paul, the second baseman, who is 0 for 1, sacked by RBI in the first, pop out to the second baseman in the third walk, and a run and a stolen base in the fifth. Breaking ball goes away, 1-0. Lights are on, but still plenty of evening light here in the sky. 8.40 p.m. Central Time inside 2-0. and oh. 2-0, swing, foul ball, 2-1. St. Joseph is 2 and 0 against the prospects this year. Back on the 10th, won 6 to 4 at Phil Welch Stadium and then won on Saturday 11 to 2 also at Phil Welch. 2-1 count. Swing pop up. This could be playable definitely is playable. The first baseman Cook ran into his pitcher but made the catch anyways. That's another foul out this time to the first baseman. Last time it was Jelnor, two up and two down. Top of the seventh continues. Prospects are down five to two. Now batting for St. Joe, number 25, Oscar Pig. Liner foul. <laughs> Bill Borenstein in the chat. Hope I'm saying your last name correctly. He says he knows what a Cohawk is, but he won't tell. 0-1. Oh Slider outside, 1-1, one one, two outs. Oscar Pegg is at the plate, right-handed batter. I mostly say it to annoy Mike Bonner. There's the pitch. Swing and a miss, 1-2. and two. But, I mean, it's not even spelled the same as the college. Like, Co is C O E, Cohawk is K O, and then Hawk. At least Dubuque makes sense. Duhawk. 
because it's spelled the same way. Blooper to right field. No, it's caught there by Colin Evers, the second baseman. Three up, three down. Prospects trying to threaten. We go to the bottom of the seventh here at McBride Field. Let's be honest. The National Symphony may not be in his future, but he wanted to try violin. So you said yes because you love him. And if you love him that much, love him enough to make sure he's buckled up and in the back seat. Find out more about keeping your kids safe in your vehicle at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. We are back and we are looking at a pretty lopsided matchup, Jim. That's right, Ron. I mean, in one corner, we've got a 175-pound guy, and in the other, a 6,000-ton heavyweight train? Jim, this guy has no idea what he's getting himself into. It's no contest. Every day, people tempt fate and die trespassing on railroad tracks. See tracks, think train. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Prospects scored their first two runs of the day off of their first hit of the day back in the bottom of the sixth. They're down five to two. So again, leading off the bottom of the seventh for Des Moines, it will be the six, seven, and eight Brooks Anderson and Jelnor. And it was Tanner Short who had that two run home run. And St. Joseph. Led 5 nothing through the first five innings before Des Moines started threatening. Let's see what they can do here. They've got nine more outs to work with. Welcome those of you from both Des Moines and St. Joseph who are listening. Appreciate your support regardless of who you are rooting for today. And first pitch gets called 0-1. St. Joe, number 17, Jaron Guck. Jaron Guck is on the mound. Aaron Harrington is done. He had thrown a no-hitter up until the first couple of base hits by Des Moines. Tanner Short had the two-run home run, and then Noah Cook had a single. Count is 0-2 here on Brooks. Here's a swing by Brooks, and he grounds it through the middle, and it's on the board with a base hit. His first of the day. He had been 0-2 coming into then. And up to the plate now will be Blake Anderson, the shortstop, who is 0 for 2. So the new pitcher, Jaron Gutt, comes on and gives up a hit. He's from Truman State. Blake Anderson. Thirty-five on his jersey, swings and misses 0 and 1. The Canadian wildfires right now blanketing the sun low and inside. Felt like the sky had been clearing out a little bit from, from the wildfires that they've been having up there, but today it is coming thick and almost looks like humidity out there, but one and one inside, two and one. Brooks on first, two one count here on Anderson at the plate. Swing, pop up towards the shortstop spot, just past the outfield. Slabowski is running, and the left fielder, Dakota Spicer, provides backup for the out. So Brooks remains on first. Off of his single, Des Moines is down 5-2. to two. One out here in the bottom of the seventh. And Lucas Jelnor, the catcher to the plate, 0 for 2 today. Again, he had the game-winning RBI back in the... 13-inning win yesterday by Des Moines that snapped its seven-game losing streak. Prospects down by three. Outside or through the outside, 0-1. Jelnor, again from Stockholm, Sweden. 0-1 count. Outside, 1-1. 
He's got Brooks on first. This is the number eight batter. Ziegler is next. One, one. Breaking ball outside, two and one. Bouncing ball slowly makes its way to the second baseman, Paul to Silbowski. The shortstop fires to Callahan. The double play is complete. Big prospects fail to add any runs. Brooks was the only runner to advance on a single. And we go to the top of the eighth. Des Moines down five to two. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking you questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Longnecker Financial Services, an independent investment management firm located in Des Moines, offering comprehensive financial services. Joe has been serving individuals and families for over 20 years and would like the opportunity to earn your business. Call us today, 515-309-4431. Thank you and enjoy the game. Prospects down 5-2, to two, failed to score a run in the bottom of the 7th after Tanner Short's two-run home run in the 6th. Parker Stewart, pleasant day at the park, has thrown well so far. He's the third pitcher used today by Des Moines. We're about to begin the top of the 8th here at McBride Field on the campus of Simpson College. Glad you're with us. We'll be live again tomorrow at 7 before the Thursday break. Chillicothe is in town tomorrow. St. Joe, top of the eighth, number nine, Dakota Spicer. Here's Dakota Spicer. It's 8, 9, and 1 due up for the Mustangs. Led 5 to nothing after 5. Des Moines got its two runs in the sixth. Breaking ball outside, 1-0. St. Joseph is out hit Des Moines today, five to three. Breaking ball outside, two and zero. Oh. Two zero oh called across the right side of the plate. Right-handed batter Spicer, two and one. Inside, bouncing off the glove of the catcher, Jelnor, and it's now three and one. Dryberg is due up. Hitter scout here. Three one. Called across the right side of the plate. Full count. Swing, foul, ball. Count stays full. Number nine, Dakota Spicer, still a full count off the foul ball. St. Joe has attacked pitches tonight. Payoff on the way, breaking ball outside. 
and Spicer will advance to first off the walk. It's the first walk given up, and just the second base runner by Parker Stewart. No outs. St. Joseph leading 5-2. to two. We are in the top of the eighth. Got a long first inning. Since then, this game has sped up. Check on the runner at first. He's safe three. Former Urbandale Jayhawks on the field right now. Parker Stewart, the pitcher. Jalen Ziegler, the center fielder. And the catcher, Lucas Jelnor. Gold, 0-1. Start the at-bat here for Dryberg. No outs on the board. Outside, one and one. Breaking ball outside, two and one. St. Joseph has not been swinging on this slider. Try the pickoff. Safe. All three of these Jayhawks played under current Peak Prospects general manager Eric Evans, who is the head coach with Urbandale. Filed away two and two, even count. Spicer was on the move, but has to go back to first for St. Jude. No outs. Mustangs up 5-2 here in the top of the eighth. The cicadas, pretty loud right now. Two and two count. Love that sound. Breaking ball missed. Back in 2011, back in Tennessee, we had the 13-year cicadas. That was 12 years ago. Full count. Runner goes up and away. Ball four doesn't matter. Spicer goes to second off the walk by Dryberg. And so Coach Willis about to head up to the mound. Stewart has walked two batters here to start the top of the eighth with Des Moines down five to two. Willis talking to his infield. Nobody coming out of the bullpen at the moment, so it looks like just a routine visit here for Willis and company. Visit is over. Two walks so far. Dryberg on first, Spicer on second. Third batter of the inning, number one batter on the lineup, Cole Slabowski, the shortstop. Slabowski from Northwest Missouri State. Great basketball team at Northwest Missouri. Won like three of the last four Division II men's basketball championships. 1-0 is the count. Two and oh. Two and oh runners on the first two bases. Called two and one. I 
Here's the 2-1 pitch, swing, fly ball, right field, short, makes the dive, and he makes the catch. What a play. Tanner Short, who had the two-run home run in the sixth. Big play there on defense. Could have scored a run there, but Spicer remains at second. Dryberg at first, one out on the board. St. Joseph does lead 5-2 here in the top of the eighth. Braden Lukart, the center fielder. Fly out in the first, walk and run in the second, walk in the fourth, fly out in the sixth. Number two batter on the lineup. Parker Stewart remains on the mound. Fastball outside, 1-0. They'll try to pick off the runner. The throw got away there from Anderson. The shortstop runners advancing to second and third on the play. Is that going to be an E6 or an E2? E1, pardon me. Error on the pitcher, Parker Stewart. To advance the runners. 2-0, one out. And now two runners in the scoring position here for St. Joseph. Massive opportunity for the Mustangs to make this game uh, potentially unreachable. Prospects only three hits today. And that's the first error for either team. 2-0 count on Lukart. Swing, fly ball right field, short underneath it, makes the catch. Runner's going to tag from third. The throw is a laser, a one-hop, and the runner goes back to third. He was already back at third once Jelnor made that catch. Two away with a throw by Tanner Short to keep this a 5-2 game. Two out. St. Joseph has not scored since the fifth, but leads this one by a score of 5-2. We're in the top of the eighth. Here's Ryan Callahan, the first baseman, number three in the batting order. Parker Stewart on the mound. Stewart kicks, fires, breaking ball missed, 1-0. Stewart fires outside, 2-0. Two oh swing liner foul. Count is two and one. Twenty three hypothetical broken windshields from our sound effect technician Mike Bonner. What'd you hit last night? Like fifty or sixty? We hit 65 last night. Runners on second and third. 2-1 count. Up and away. 3-1 and one. chance here for St. Joseph to load the bases. Two outs on the board. The Mustangs up 5-2 here in the top of the eighth. Three and one. Kick and fire. Did he go? No. Ball four. Did not complete the swing. He checked his swing, but Callahan to first off the walk. The bases are loaded. Two outs. St. Joseph leading this one. Five to two, top of the eighth. Easton Bruce to the plate. Walk in a single in the first and second. The single was an RBI. Since then, he's gone 0 for 2 with a fly out and a pop out in the fourth and sixth. So two outs on the board. Runners on all bases here for St. Joe. Here is the pitch by Stewart. Outside, 1-0 on a fastball. One zero swing. Yeah. That is a liner, a one-hop ground ball that stays fair and will score two runs as it goes beyond play. Just a well-hit one-hop that got past the first baseman, Cook. 
and two massive runs by St. Joseph as Spicer and Dryberg score to make it a 7-2 to two lead. The double, the RBI double by Easton Bruce. Callahan to third, runners on second and third, and a new pitcher coming in for Des Moines, most likely. Yep, call to the bullpen. It is Doc Fulbright. Jeter Doc Fulbright the fourth, who has been one of the most utilized pitchers this year for Des Moines. But St. Joseph has made this once again a five-run lead. We will take a break on the Peak Prospects Network. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on smokybear.com with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Hey, hon, what you doing with your phone? Taking pictures? No, I'm asking questions. Like what? Hey, Bobo, do flowers have best friends? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, follow me. I want to show you something. Look, flowers do have best friends. Whoa. Some answers can only be found in nature. Discover the unsearchable. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a trail near you. Brought to you by the United States Forest Service and the Ad Council. Two outs, bases loaded. Doc Fulbright from Paradise, Texas is on the mound, and the first pitch is fouled up and away to make this an 0-1 count. As we welcome you back to live coverage, Mink League Baseball, Peak Prospects Network, YouTube, and Mixler. Fulbright, six foot one. 247. Breaking ball outside. Got past the catcher. Callahan will score, and Holton will advance to third. Bases were not loaded, by the way. It was just runners on second and third after Easton Bruce had the RBI double. But nonetheless, another run scores, and St. Joe now leads 8-2 to two here in the top of the eighth inning. Eight to two with a one one count. Pop up. This will stay in play. And it is caught. That'll do it and take us to the bottom of the eighth. Peak prospects give up three runs. They're down eight to two. I spent a lot of time in the garage, but even more time in the rain and mud. In 95, I helped tow your moving trailer. And in 09, it was sparks from me, your chains, dragging behind your truck that accidentally started a wildfire. Spark a change, not a wildfire. Visit SmokeyBear.com, brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Only you can prevent wildfires. Neil Armstrong waited six hours and 39 minutes to step onto the surface of the moon. Jackie Robinson waited 20 months to play his first game with the Brooklyn Dodgers. And even DiCaprio had to wait 22 years to win an Oscar. 
You can wait until your destination. Don't text and drive. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. St. Joe leads 8-2, to two, bottom of the eighth heading your way. Peak prospects have to find a way to score six runs with only six outs to work with. And so due up is going to be Jalen Ziegler. Bottom of the eighth, 0 for 2 today. Only runs today scored on a two- Run, home run by Tanner Short. Just completed his freshman season at DMAC, batted 337, looks at ball 1 1 0. That's Des Moines Area Community College, which has several campuses throughout the metropolitan area, but they play their athletic events in Boone. Bouncing ball, third baseman Holton. Not in time to first, and Ziegler is safe with a single. Ziegler gets on, and we'd like to let our fans and attendants know that the concession stand will close. So a base hit for Des Moines, just its fourth of the day. They've been out hit six to four. They're down eight to two. Thomas, the designated hitter who was the starting pitcher, throwing a couple of innings, swings on the first one, and he sends a ground ball past the second baseman into right field. Thomas is rounding. They're going to try and throw him out, and they're going to get him. And Ziegler ran all the way to third, but one out. Thomas got the single, but taken out on his way to second. Tanner short the right fielder to the plate. One out, peak prospects down eight to two. Now batting number 15, Tanner short. Tanner short. Short had the two run home run, his first Mink League home run. Swing and tip on the miss, so and one. Something he's been looking to do all season. And finally got one. Swing and a miss, 0-2. Ziegler, the lone runner on third. Prospects down 8-2 to two here in the bottom of the eighth. Again, three runs in the top of this inning by St. Joseph. 1-2. and two. There's a swing by short, fly ball towards deep right, and the reaching catch is made by Dryberg. And two outs on the board, tagging from third. Ziegler goes home to make it an 8-3 game. And Ziegler is in for the one run. That. Here is Noah Cook. First baseman, right-handed batter coming up to the plate here for the Peak Prospects. Opening pitch, 1-0. This is Jaron Guck, who's thrown one complete inning so far. It's the call, 1-1, one and one, with the base is now empty. Swing. Liner one hop bounces off of Paul, the second baseman. Cook is on the board with a one-out or a two-out single, his second single of the day. So Declan O'Hare 0 for 2 with a walk back in the fourth up to the plate for Des Moines. Just kidding. It's a pinch hitter, John Doty from Nyack. Pinch hitter coming in for Des Moines Peak Prospect, number 24, John Doty. Likely that he'll go to third after this. Doty likes to golf in his free time. If you ever see him, ask him about his latest golf score. He'll tell you. Native of Urbandale. Two outs on the board. Runner on first for Des Moines. Peak prospects are down 8-3 to three here against St. Joseph. Here's the pitch. 0-1. Oh 
Swing and a miss. 0 oh 2, two outs. Bottom of the eighth continues. Peak prospects down by five. A new number four batter, John Doty. Outside, 1 2. Doty stands at six foot two. 1 2. Swing by Doty. Ground ball to the shortstop. Slapowski opts for the force out. High catch made by Paul, the second baseman. So a fielder's choice. Cook is retired on the 6-4. And that'll do it for the eighth. St. Joseph leading this one 8-3. We go to our final inning after this. Doc Fulbright back to the mound. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen. For late nights writing English papers. For your teen's music taste. For dinners, where they talk more on their phone than with you. For the first time, they call you mom. You're never completely ready to adopt a teen, and you can't imagine the reward. To learn more about adopting a teen, visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. Wake up and text. Text and eat. Mm -mm. Text and meet up with a friend you haven't seen in forever. Hi. Oh, hey. Text and complain that they're on their phone the whole time. <laughs> Text and listen to them complain that you're on your phone the whole time. Uh. Text and whatever. But when you get behind the wheel, give your phone to a passenger. Put it in the glove box. Just don't text and drive. Visit StopTextsStopRex.org. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Top of the ninth, heading your way. Prospects down 8-3. to three. Against St. Joseph, they've gone 0-2 against the Mustangs up to this point. Michael Paul is due up. Doc Fulbright back to the mound, came in during the eighth inning to replace Parker Stewart after the Dryberg. Two RBI double. First pitch fouled back 0-1. <laughs> So he's thrown a third of an inning so far. Starts out with an 0-1 count. St. Joe up 8-3, top of the ninth. They scored three runs in the first couple of innings. Added on two more in the fifth. Des Moines scored two. That's ball one, by the way, in the bottom of the sixth. Off the Tanner short, two-run home run to left field. But then in the top of the eighth, it was three runs. Swing, high fly ball into center field. And the catch is made by Ziegler, one away. Ziegler with the catch will bring up number 25, Oscar Pegg. Oscar Pegg, who is 0 for 3. With a walk in the first. He does have an RBI off a ground out back in the fifth. One out on the board, base is empty. St. Joseph leading by five. Swing and a miss, 0-1. Fourth pitcher used today by Des Moines. 0-1. Oh, one. one and one. Fulbright played his freshman season at the University of the Ozarks. Breaking ball, swing and a miss, one and two. One and two, one out. Team's tied at six hits apiece. Fastball missed. He tried the knuckle before and it worked, but that time he goes with a fastball. And getting chirped right now by the St. Joe dugout. Two and two, one out, base is empty. Even count. Two and two pitch coming up. 
Here it is. Swing popped up into foul territory. Jelnor looking at it, but it's out of play. Count stays at two and two. Two and two, one away. Base is empty. Outside. Now a full count. Fulbright communicates with Jelnor. Winds up. Fastball swung on line to left foul. Count will stay full. Well hit ball, but wide there from Peg, the number seven batter on the lineup. St. Joseph up eight to three here in the top of the ninth with one out on the board and a full count here against Oscar Pegg. From Lincoln Trail University, sophomore. As St. Joseph continues to heckle Fulbright. Payoff pitch on the way. Breaking ball, got him! Out number two. Bases remain empty. Dakota Spicer, the left fielder. To the plate. Fulbright with the strikeout. We'll bring up number nine, Dakota Spicer. Spicer today. Strikeout in the first and the third. Ground out in the fifth. Walk and a run in the eighth. St. Joseph leads eight to three. Fulbright misses low, 1-0. Below the zone, 2-0. and oh. Good eye there from Spicer. Dryberg is due up as Spicer can advance. Two outs. <laughs> Called 2-1. and one. Des Moines has walked three times today. St. Joseph has walked nine times. Easily the biggest difference in this game. Swing, bouncing ball, foul, two and two. Two away. Prospects have only scored in the sixth and the eighth today. Two and one, respectively. Two and two. Fulbright. Fastball down, trying for the corner and miss. 3 2. Right handed batter Spicer against this right handed pitcher Fulbright. Tries a breaking ball inside, ball four. Spicer to first. Dryberg up to the plate. St. Joseph leads this one eight to three. Number 44. Dryberg has an Will. RBI single so far. He has struck out twice. He had a walk back in the eighth and scored as well in the eighth inning for his one run today. Two outs against St. Joe by five. Top of the ninth. Spicer on first. Fulbright fires down in the zone called. Away from the batter, 0-1. Oh, one. Fulbright. Fastball missed. Wide. One and one. Spicer remains on first. A slight lead. Breaking ball. Swing. Ground ball softly. O'Hare finds Anderson for the out. And that was actually... Doty, the new third baseman. Gravengood, pardon me. Gravengood, the new third baseman. Kate Gravengood. 
who made the throw. But the Peak Prospects are down by a score of 8-3. to three. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Three outs, five runs. We'll see what Des Moines can do. Let's be honest. The National Symphony may not be in his future, but he wanted to try violin. So you said yes because you love him. And if you love him that much, love him enough to make sure he's buckled up and in the back seat. Find out more about keeping your kids safe in your vehicle at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Melissa from Michigan. I work an extra part-time job serving lunch at my child's school, but I still can't afford to put food on our table. Daniel from California. Choosing whether to pay the rent or pay to fix the car to get to work doesn't leave us with much at all. Now we can't even pay for meals. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Bottom of the ninth, heading your way. Peak prospects down 8-3. to three. Des Moines has a record of 10 and 13. St. Joseph has a league record of 13 and 8, overall 15 and 8, but that doesn't count in the mink standings, those two wins over non league teams. So, due up for Des Moines, down by five in the bottom of the ninth. It's Evers, Brooks, and Anderson. Your current score St. Joseph 8, Des Moines 3. Appreciate you all watching us, watching our live stream today and listening to our live stream. New pitcher on the mound is Jack Wells. So Aaron Harrington started. Jaron Guck threw a couple of innings. Now Jack Wells from William Jewell University on the mound. Colin Evers warming up. He's due up. Prospects down 8-3, to three, bottom of the ninth, about to begin. Here's Colin Evers, 0 for 3 today, all on flyouts. One was, I think, a pop out to the shortstop, but still. Bottom of the ninth, Jack Wells to close this game for St. Joe. Gets the call, 0 and 1. <laughs> St. Joseph has beaten Des Moines twice this year already in the two previous meetings. Swing and a miss. Owen oh 2 is the count. Outside, one and two. One, two. Low, two and two. Again, Des Moines, 10 and 13. Count is even. Wells fires. Swing, ground ball. Gets in the 3-4 gap. And Evers is on base for the first time today. So the prospect's down 8-3 to three right now in the bottom of the ninth. Jackson Brooks to the plate for Des Moines. He had a single back Seven in the seventh. Des Moines, number 28, Jackson Brooks. The Burlington, Iowa native. That's in southeast Iowa right off the Mississippi River. Prospects have now out hit St. Joseph 7 to 6, but again, the walks for St. Joe have been probably the deciding factor of this score so far. Swing and a miss, 0 so and 1. Blake Anderson is due up. 0 and 1. Swing, high fly ball, right field. That's going to go foul. 0-2. Oh, 
A disclaimer on the windshield sound effects. Mike Bonner will play these windshield sound effects on routine foul balls down the baseline, fouls back to the fence. It doesn't matter if he, if it goes out of the park, sure, but he'll play it whenever he wants to. There's a bouncing ball past the first baseman, Callahan. Runners will stay at first and second. Good throw there, but still Des Moines has runners on the first two bags, down eight to three, no outs, bottom of the ninth. Blake Anderson, the shortstop, about to come up to the plate. The catcher, Oscar Pegg, talking with his pitcher, Jack Wells, for a second. And now Pegg about to go back behind the plate. Anderson is 0 for 3 today. Evers had been 0 for 3 before he got the leadoff single moments ago. Wells kicks and fires Anderson swing and a miss, so in one. Oh and one, Wells. Winds up and delivers. Low and in, one and one. Prospects have now Taken a two-hit lead in that category, eight to six, but they're down eight to three right now. You got Brooks on first, Evers on second. They've both had base hits. The shortstop Anderson at the plate swings and fouls it up and back out of play. One and two. Bonner just looked at me and said, "That's a broken windshield for you." However, there are no cars parked over there. There's a tennis court over there, so. There was no windshield over there. Stop talking, Mike. One and two. Inside, two and two. Two and two. Inside, three and two. Full count. Anderson at the plate. Low ball four, bases loaded. Evers to third, Brooks to second. Anderson to first. There are no outs, and Des Moines is down eight to three here in the bottom of the ninth. Lucas Jelnor, who was the hero yesterday in the 13th. Last night, to the plate, quick discussion here between Jack Wells and his second baseman, Michael Paul. So eight to three once again. Peak prospects down by five, no outs on the board. They have the bases loaded. The tying run is on deck at the moment. The run that would set up that tying run is at the plate. Bases loaded. It's Anderson, Brooks, and Evers. Swing and a strike. Zero and one. Oh one, swing and a miss. Oh and two. It was actually a foul tip. Never mind. But still, it is strike two. Base is loaded. Foul ball up and back and away. Oh and two. That could actually be considered a windshield sound effect because that went towards the parking lot. I certainly hope that nobody's windshield actually gets broken. Bases loaded, 0-2, no outs. 
Jazz missed one, two. Eight to three. Jelnor swings, high bouncing ball that goes to the shortstop. This could be a double play. Nope, just a force out. Runner at third off the bag for a moment, but he is safe. Runner goes home. Evers will score. It's an 8-4 game. For the run. At bat, number Brooks to third. Anderson Jaylen. is retired. Jelnor to first off the fielder's choice. That scores a run. One out on the board here is Jalen Ziegler. Tying run remains on deck since there are now only two runners on base. Ziegler had a single and a run back in the eighth. Bottom of the ninth continues upstairs, 1-0. Carter Thomas is next. Bottom of the ninth, Peak Prospects down 8-4. to four. One out. Runners at the corners. Ziegler fouls it back on a liner. One and one. Jelner on first. Brooks on third. Upstairs, two and one. Yeah. High, three and one. Runners at the corners, hitters count. Ball here would load the bases, one out on the board. Swing, foul ball on a fly ball high beyond right. Three and two. Full count, one out. Swing and a miss. Chase a high pitch. Two outs. Runners on first and third. We've got Anderson on first, Brooks on third. Des Moines has scored a run here in the bottom of the ninth. They're down eight to four. Carter Thomas to the plate. Thomas zips one high and away, foul ball. Left-handed batter at the plate. This is a right-handed pitcher, Wells. Oh, one swing, bouncing ball sneaks past the pitcher, but the second baseman Paul goes for the force out to the shortstop Slabowski, and the game is over. And that'll bring our game to a close. Your final score. Peak prospects tried to put on a rally, but could only get one run, and that is it. Des Moines falls eight to four to St. Joseph and drops to ten and fourteen. The Mustangs improve to fourteen and eight and three and zero in the season series against Des Moines. These teams will meet again on I want to say Sunday, Saturday or Sunday here. But the Peak Prospects, meanwhile, will be taking on Chillicothe tomorrow at seven p.m. Right here, we'll have that game on YouTube and Mixler. Thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to all of the viewers. We'll take a quick break here on the Peak Prospects Network and wrap this one up after this. Hi, I'm 
Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says... Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on... SmokeyBear.com with many other wildfire prevention tips. Right. Thanks, honey bear. Because remember, only you can prevent wildfires. Brought to you by the USDA Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Big prospects fall by a score of 8-4. to four. They outhit St. Joseph 8-6, to six, had one error defensively, did Des Moines. But I think the biggest difference tonight was the walks once again. Been a bit of an issue for Des Moines so far. They had four walks themselves, but they gave up 10. And uh, th- that really helped St. Joseph. First time these teams played, it was the errors that helped St. Joseph. Second time, St. Joe just played very well offensively and defensively, won 11-2. Big prospects put up a fight multiple times. Uh, huge shout out to Tanner Short with his first Mink League home run, a two run bomb to left field that put Des Moines down five to two at that point. But three runs in the top of the eighth sealed the deal for St. Joseph, and one run in the eighth and in the ninth for Des Moines. Not enough. They fall eight to four. Their record is now ten and fourteen. They host Chillicothe here tomorrow, and then we'll get a break on Friday before hosting a couple more home games on July first and July second. And St. Joe will improve to 14 and 8. Well, that'll about do it for the Des Moines Peak Prospects. I'm Spencer Bohm saying so long. Have a great rest of your evening. We will see you tomorrow at 7. Thank you uh, sincerely to all of the St. Joseph fans who were watching and or listening tonight. Appreciate your viewership as well. And congratulations on the 8-4 to four win. For the Des Moines Peak Prospects, this is Spencer Bohm saying so long. Have a great rest of your night, and we will see you at 7 tomorrow. Sometimes I just cannot believe all the storms we've gone through here. I can only hope that we'll be able to leave this house to you one day, baby. You're our legacy. Planning for these disasters will make sure we're safe and is the best way to protect that legacy.